Hi there, this is Mark, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to access Apple Keynote's Equation Editor. I love this Equation Editor because it is super simple, easy to access with a slick command option E key binding, and of course, it uses LaTeX to typeset mathematical expressions that can be thrown into your presentation and they look pro without having to know LaTeX. It's brilliant, it's super awesome. I also wanna be able to show you the difference between an inline math expression and a display style math expression so you can get using those in your presentations immediately. So let's stop talking, let's fire up Apple Keynote and start teching. All right, I guess we can get right into the slide editor here. And I'm gonna show you first how to open the equation editor. And one way of doing this is using the menu bar, going to insert down to equation, and boom, there it is, the equation editor dialog box. And it's here where you can directly input your LaTeX code and you get an immediate uh, update on how that will look. Now notice, that spaces are ignored by the LaTeX compiler. So you can have as many spaces as you want and they'll be ignored. I typically like to space things so it's a little bit easier to read. It's not affecting the output, however. Uh, now the object entered, I'm going to update its color here using the uh, color palette and I'm also going to increase its size. And now we have this LaTeX object that works like any other Keynote object. So you can move them around, you can animate them, add effects. So here I've just added this skid in animation. Super cool, super easy to work with. Now this time I'm going to bring up the dialog box by using command option E. I'm gonna type in another uh, equation here, an identity, but look at this. I wanted five times three, but that X has been interpreted as a variable X. So in order to typeset a times operator, uh, we are going to use our first command, which is the times command. So that's backslash times, and we can see here that the infix up, uh, operator's been updated. All right, so let's go back into the inspector here, update our color to maybe yellow, and then we're going to go ahead and maybe increase the size of our equation. Now to get back into this equation and update it, I can double click on it, and maybe I wanted a center dot infix operator instead, so I can update my command to center dot or C dot in this case, and it's automatically updated. I can also take this object, click on it, command C for copy, command V for paste, and then double click into it. And now I've preserved the properties of the object, its color and size, and I can now re-edit it. So maybe 15 divided by three. Maybe I wanna use a Bellis notation here, so that's gonna be command div, and it has been updated. Super easy and, well, fast. Now let's go ahead and take a look at inline math mode. I'm just going to create a bullet list here. So let's say you're just typing and you're writing the distributive law. Now I can just go command option E and boom, hands have not left the keyboard and now I am editing my equation in the LaTeX editor. So I can just go ahead, type it in, insert using command enter. My hands have not left the keyboard. Again, super quick and easy. Notice that this is an identity, so I could update it to, instead of using an equal sign using equiv. So now you can see that this actually is an identity equation. Alternatively, we could also give some color to this to really highlight that factor of A with some red color. I have a command called a color. The first argument in the curly braces is red and the whole command is within curly braces itself. I'm just gonna copy and paste that in for the factor A update and there it is, our new improved distributive law identity equation. Okay, so now let's take a look at an equation here. This one's conditional, two X plus three is equal to nine and maybe I wanna write the solution set to this equation. So let's go ahead, the solution set is, and command option E, and then put in our solution set. But there's a problem. Where's our curly braces? I don't see them. So curly braces, as you saw in the previous uh, part, we used it to identify an argument of a command. So in this case, we have to escape those 
curly braces so that they will actually be displayed. And now when we go to go ahead and update this, we can see that our solution set is now there. One more inline math example. We are going to now have the same uh, conditional equation, except this time we're going to use the command implies that the equation x equals to 3 is true as well. Okay, now we can get into fractions and scaled brackets. Well, if we're talking about fractions, maybe we could define the set of rational numbers. Now we're going to be using the blackboard bold Q here to denote the name of this set. So math BB is our command and Q for quotient. Now we're going to go ahead and define this set here. We already know how we can escape those curly braces and we're going to now use the frac command which has two arguments. The first is the numerator and the second is the denominator but we have a problem. Our curly braces have not scaled with our fraction. In fact, this is a really noticeable beginner mistake. So let's get back in there and fix it. Now I'm going to use the left command on the opening brace and the right command on the closing brace and that fixes everything for us. Let's go in and finish up the definition so such that the numerator and denominator are elements of, so we use the in command there, now of the set of integers. So math blackboard bold z and of course that denominator d cannot be equal to zero so backslash any q for not equal to zero and our set has been defined. Now I'm going to move into the next part here where we're just going to uh, show how to simplify an expression. At least I'm going to give you an expression to simplify. So we have 3 plus x multiplied by 3x over 2 using the fraction command plus 7. Again, we run into that same problem where our brackets are not scaling with the expression. So again, to fix this, we're going to go to the opening parenthesis in this case, giving it the left command and the right parenthesis having the right uh, command uh, prepended to it. And that fixes the uh, brackets there. Okay, now we can talk about powers and subscripts. So say we're asked to solve the conditional equation x squared plus 7x plus 12 is equal to zero. Notice that how I use the caret uh, to denote that power of 2. Now I want to be able to express the solution set to this. So we have x squared plus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0. But I could also show this by using the implies command. So x sub 1 is equal to negative 3 and x sub 2 is equal to negative 4. Now notice that the this conjunction and is being interpreted as three variables a n and d. So to fix this I'm going to pass this and a string to the text command and that fixes it. It's now of type Roman, but I would like some spaces there and I can do this using command comma. Again, any other spaces are just gonna be ignored by the LaTeX compiler. And so this is looking much better. So we use a caret for superscript and an underscore for subscript. Now there is one thing that I should point out here and maybe I can do this through the example of the product of common base powers law. So here I have a product of two powers. So b to the power of m times b to the power of n. And we know that this is always equal to b to the power of m plus n. So if the base is the same we add the exponents but that's not what is being uh, that's not the output. So to fix this we are going to use our curly braces here to denote the exponent. So m plus n is the exponent and that will fix that. Ooh, there was one more thing that I wanted to show you and I can do that using the Pythagorean identity. So we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is always equal to 1. But notice that the function names in this case are italicized and they should be of type Roman. So what I'm going to do is actually go back into my equation here and up those two using the sine and cosine commands. So those will be typeset properly. And since it's an identity, let's go ahead and change our equal sign to command equiv. 
Okay, let's go ahead and finish this off. We're gonna talk about display math mode super quickly here. I'm not gonna get into too many details other than introduce you to our first LaTeX environment, which is going to be the align environment. Essentially, once we have this expression that we're going to simplify, I'm going to create a set of equations that are aligned about the equal sign. So I'm gonna enter the equation editor just like I normally would except this time I'm going to start with a command called begin and this tells the compiler that now we're starting an environment and the argument align tells us that this is the align environment and when we're done with our environment we're going to close that with the end command followed by the same environment name. Now you'll notice that I've used the ampersand that prior to the equal sign here. And that's just gonna tell the compiler, hey, I want you to align these equal signs vertically. And now in my second expression or my right expression, I'm just showing that multiplicative identity factor of one and using some definition of subtraction. So I'm using a little bit of color in here. Notice my hands are not leaving the keyboard. And now I want to move into the next line. So I'm going to use a double backslash here. Now what's really cool is I can just have these and align statements uh, aligned to the left here because spaces don't matter uh, to the LaTeX compiler and then I can just go ahead here and use the distributive law and we're going through the simplification process. I'm writing these expressions line by line. My hands are not leaving the keyboard and it is that easy easy. So now we have our final expression here of 4x plus 15 and we are done. How awesome is that? That is a very quick introduction to using LaTeX in Apple Keynote.